Hi guys, Zoe here for OneGlanceTrader.com and welcome back to our Baby Pips Forex Education video series. So we're still in the elementary school in the first grade, uh, looking at support and resistance levels. And in the last video, we looked at the basics of support and resistance on how to draw how to draw these levels or zones. In this video, we'll be talking about trend lines. And what I've done is opened up the the page or the education page from baby pips on trend lines and it gives you a high level overview of what trend lines are what an uptrend is what a downtrend is and more importantly is how do you actually draw these trend lines so again with support and resistance trend lines are very subjective in terms of the individual traders preference so I've selected a video that gives a good view on how to draw trend lines that is probably universal known uh, and it's very easy it gives you some very good examples on on looking at various charts on how to draw trend lines now the examples he uses are not forex pairs uh, however the concepts that he talks about you can apply it to your forex chart so that's not too much of an issue so before we get, get on to the video just wanted to remind you that the full link of the video and the channel where the videos come from is in the description below so i hope you find the video useful and uh, let's get on with it so this is gold on the hourly time frame and we're going to be looking at what constitutes a downtrend and it's the lower lows lower highs and lower lows so there doesn't always have to be lower lows and we'll look at a couple examples a descending triangle pattern has a horizontal base and then lower highs as the price gets tighter and tighter so we'll look at those examples but lower highs and lower lows is the basic fundamental of what a downtrend is and just think of stairs if you're going upstairs higher lows higher highs and downstairs is the opposite lower highs and lower lows so drawing a trend line this is me using real bodies so i'm picking a point to start that trend line at and picking your point really becomes with practice because if i were to start this trend line up back here it would not be a good trend line because i would only be able to hit one point so let's let's do some examples here if i were to draw the trend line from let's say the highest price that was hit here i would use that real body of the candlestick and i would get that one trend line and when i'm drawing trend lines with the real body of the candlestick i'm ensuring that no candlestick is closing above my downtrend line so you can see this candlestick is poking out above it but the close of that red candlestick is all the way down here i'm making sure that the green candlestick closed right at my resistance line and then the price rejected so i wouldn't want to draw my trend line here just because it hits twice and then the price action is all the way down there i want to be where the action is at so i would choose this as my starting point that top on that bounce attempt and then i would make sure to hit as many points as I can on the way down but again I'm just getting tighter and tighter and making sure that no price closes above my downtrend line so if I were to pull it in and and hit this point right here and make my focus right there then I'm seeing that this breakout occurs and this would make it an invalid trend line because obviously the price is not responding to it so I want to give a little bit more wiggle room and again make sure that no hourly candlesticks are closing above my downtrend line I'm closing right on it right below it and then there's that rejection so i've got one two three four touches and then it ended up touching a fifth time down here and actually a sixth time right there before that clear break above it and that is telling us that the bulls are showing up so every time we rejected another lower low followed through with it now that we have broken this downtrend line that could be a bullish entry signal because we are seeing that the price is no longer rejecting from that level now personally not only is the break of a trend line important i use trend lines as sort of a heads up it's not all out in the bag for the bulls once that level breaks because i'm i'm all about price action price action is king in my opinion so i'll be looking at these lower highs that are set and these are forming resistance every time we make a bounce attempt and reject that's a new resistance level to be watching so we made a bounce and we rejected from 1202 we made another bounce rejected from 1191 and then another bounce the last one here before the breakout rejected at 1186 so now that the bulls have gotten in control that alone breaking that trend line could be a buy signal for the more risky traders if someone wanted to be a bit more cautious they would wait for the lower high pattern to break as well 
So again, this top was at 1191. So once the price breaks 1191, we break the lower high pattern. So not only is the trend line important, but so is the previous price action. And because that's where we're going to be looking for resistance now that we're on our way back up again. So we can even draw an uptrend line here. When I'm drawing an uptrend line, I'm hitting the bottom of any red candlestick. I'm making sure no hourly candlestick closes below my uptrend line. So even though this green candlestick is dipping well below that trend line, that's the open of the candlestick. That's the close of the candlestick. Every single close here is above my trend line support. So where do we find resistance? We look back at the downtrend. Every bounce attempt rejected and formed a new resistance level. So I'm seeing a resistance level up here at 1202 and we are currently at 1194. So that is one of the next levels that I would be looking at. There was another little bounce attempt right here that rejected from the downtrend line. That level is 1198. So that's going to come first. So that's a clear downtrend line. Let's look at Tesla on the daily time frame. Daily time frame. Very strong uptrend. So again, making sure no candlestick is closing below. We have plenty of lower wicks dipping below, but as long as the price continues to close above that level, it acts as support. So here we are visually, I zoom out and say, where do I want to start my trend? I want to start it, start the uptrend line. Once we have our clear lowest price and we had a little higher low here. So we can see once that steep trend started right down at the base is where I choose that first candlestick to go off of. And then we touch that level or we touch this trend line. One, two, three, four more times than you can count here. Well, I would hope you can count that high, but let's call it a dozen plus times. So we know that's a very valid trend line and it keeps hitting it and bouncing. We're consolidating now where we currently stand and we have this trend line support to be watching and we can utilize this information because if we lose this uptrend line, that's a potential signal to reverse and look in the opposite direction. So like I said earlier at the, in the outline, losing an uptrend line or lose or breaking a downtrend line is a signal of a potential reversal and can have us looking in the other direction. So let's look back at those same trend lines we were just looking at, and let's go over the two different schools of thought. And again, neither is right or wrong. It all depends on what resonates with you personally. So if we have someone who is prescribing to the upper wicks theory on a downtrend, we would be looking at someone drawing their start at the upper wick and hitting the upper wicks on the way down, making sure no upper wick is poking above their downtrend resistance line. So that is where that trend would go. And personally, why I don't like this is because technical analysis is not an exact science. So breaking the downtrend line would be just poking above it. And we can see here this candle right before the bounce started, broke above it and then pulled back fairly significantly. So that's a little bit of a fake out. And fake outs obviously happen. Like I said, it's not an exact science. But I like the real bodies of the candlestick because that makes the bulls in this scenario prove to me that they have the strength to not only break above, but to close the candlestick above that downtrend resistance line. So a bullish push and then the bears stepping back in and knocking the price down wouldn't occur because we would have to be sure that the close was going to come over the downtrend line. So with this school of thought, you might get a signal a little bit earlier and potentially some of the times that's going to work out and give you greater profit, but with greater reward is going to come greater risk with the scenario that potentially the price gets rejected and doesn't close above that downtrend line. So again, that's the upper wick. And personally, I'm using the real bodies and making sure that the price has to close above the downtrend resistance line in order for it to be broken. So same thing on Tesla. Let's see where we would draw this trend line. If we were using the wicks, it would be a lot more wiggle room because of that downtrend line or that down spike right here where that lower wick dipped. Let's zoom in so we can get this more clearly. So hitting and making sure that no lower wicks are dipping below the price. We've got multiple touches here. And again, that gives a lot more wiggle room. We could pull back multiple days before we touch this trend line. Whereas if I'm using the real bodies, it's a lot tighter and there's a lot less wiggle room. So in this scenario, we might get an earlier signal because I'm using the real bodies rather than the wicks because there's a lot less wiggle room before we do touch that trend line. So again, there is no right or wrong answer. I suggest playing around with both, seeing which you like better. I'm not saying I'm right and everybody else is wrong that does it the other way. But this is just what has resonated with me over the years as what I find to be more accurate and a more strong signal at looking at a break of trend. And there you have it. I really hope you found that useful. 
would be very grateful if you could like, share and comment on this video and also take the time out just to subscribe to my channel. I really want to try to get these educational videos out there to as many traders as possible and really show them the way that they can learn to better themselves in Forex trading and also become a more consistent and profitable trader. And I shall see you on the next video.